So this video, we're going to do part B. So this is the fire station problem. We already formulated it. I have the solution here. Um, and part B says use Excel solver to get the optimal solution to the set covering problem. Um, so we have Excel open uh, and I'll walk you through how to do this. This is very similar to what we did in aggregate planning, except now uh, we need to formulate this as a integer linear program, um, but the, the setup is similar, okay? So just as a background, we have 11 neighborhoods and the data we have for them is we know the cost of building in those 11 neighborhoods. So that will go here. This is an input parameter. We need to define our decision variables and this again is what the model gets to decide. So these are our x, j, and we will have 11 of those, okay? So this here is where I'm gonna tell Solver to change the cells. This is where they get to change things um, because they're the decision variables, okay? And so then we need to add um, our objective function. And what is our objective function? If we look over here, it's basically 40x1 plus 30x2 or uh, cj, which is this. Uh, multiplied by our xj. So what would we have here? We'd have equals the sum product, which remember sum product takes this array and this array and does the dot product of them, which is exactly what we want. We want x1 times 40 plus x2 times 30 plus x3 times 20 and so forth. And that's what sum product does. So that's our value here. So that's our objective function that we want to minimize. Um, and then we have these constraints, right? And so we have 11 different constraints, um, one for each neighborhood that needs to be covered. And you can see here they have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, um, and it's greater than or equal to one, okay? So what we can do is we could think about making um, the AIJ matrix, which is basically the AIJ matrix is if there's a one in front of it, the AIJ is one, if there's a zero, or if it's not showing up, there's a zero AIJ. And so for this example, for constraints, let's just say uh, neighborhood, neighborhood one needs to be covered, right? So that's our first constraint. So what is it? Well, X1 is good, X2 is good, X3 is good, X4 is good. These have zeros, right? So they're, um, and then what do we say? We have that it's greater than or equal to one, okay? So that's our constraint. We will implement this part uh, in Excel Solver. Um, and so that's not perfect um, yet uh, because what are we saying? We still, these are the input parameters, but we need to map them to our decision variable, okay? And so what I'm gonna do here um, is basically shift this over and say uh, the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the constraint. So what is the left-hand side? It's the sum product of these coefficients with our decision variables, okay? And so here, because all of our xj's are zero for now, you can see that this is not a feasible solution, right? Because we need at least some of these xj's to turn on to cover neighborhood one. We will enforce that in uh, Solver. Um, to force that these go up, okay? All right, so that's neighborhood one needs to be covered. You could think about neighborhood two needs to be covered. And so what do we have here in terms of this? Well, if you see here, we have X1, X2, X3, and X5, okay? Um, and then the rest are zeros. And so what we're able to do is if we just use dollar signs for uh, the, the decision variables, um, that will hold that fixed and I can just go down here. And what that did is it's the, again, some product, uh, which is the dot product of X1 times one plus X2 times one plus X3 times one, X4 times zero, which is why X4 is not showing up in this constraint. Um, and so forth. And so the right hand side stays one and this again is greater than or equal to, right? Um, and so we could keep doing that, right? So we could keep doing that for neighborhoods three all the way down until 11, right? So if I go here, 
Um, this is that neighborhood 11 uh, needs to be covered, right? So this is three, this is four, this is five, um, six, um, seven, this is eight, this is nine, this is 10, and this is 11. Okay. So what does this all say is all I'm doing is putting the ones and zeros uh, based on um, the constraints I wrote out. One thing to note is what are all of these here? This is the AIJ input parameters. Um, and so that's useful um, to think about is this is the AIJ um, input parameter. All right, so again, we would have the same um, here. And if you put dollar signs, this should work, but let's check it. Um, so let's just click one. And if we click on it, it's taking the decision variables times my uh, zero or one coefficients in front of them. And these all should be greater than or equal to one. Okay, so we have now uh, 11 constraints, uh, set covering constraints. The only thing we're missing in terms of constraints is that each of these decision variables uh, here need to be binary. And so we will implement that constraint in Excel Solver. Okay, so we're all now ready to solve and get an answer. Okay, so let's go to Data Solver. And it says, okay, set the objective function. So we put our objective function here. And then it says we are minimizing, right? And what are we changing? We're changing these variables. So whether we build or not, and there's 11 of them. And then we should add our constraints. So what do we have a constraints? We have these 11 uh, set covering constraints and they all, the left hand side needs to be greater than or equal to one for all of them. So that's our set covering constraints and there are 11 of them, so we'll add that. And then the only other one we're missing is the binary one. So we want these variables. If you click here and you say binary, that will force uh, the constraint that says x1 has to be 0 or 1 only. And so we're going to add that. Um, and so now we have the two sets of uh, constraints. We have our binary constraints and our set covering constraints. Um, and then um, I'm going to click uh, simplex here. Um, this is technically an integer program. It's no longer a strictly linear program, but because it's simple um, and has special structure, uh, simplex LP is probably the best uh, one to use in Excel. All right, and now I'm gonna click solve. And it said solver found a solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied, and I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so we now have a solution. What is our solution? Well, our decision variables are given here, and this says we should build in neighborhood three, we should build in neighborhood seven, and we should build in neighborhood 10. We should not build in neighborhood one, two, four, five, six, eight, nine, and 11, okay? So that's our decision. Where should we build? Where should we not build? Um, and our objective function is the cost of that, right? And so if I build in one, seven, and 10, that will cost me $80,000, $100,000, right? So that's our objective function. And then we can just double check to see what's going on. So one of the things to note is all of these uh, constraints, the left-hand side you see is always greater than or equal to one, which means if I build in um, three, seven, and 10, I'm good with all of these 11 um, neighborhoods. And so we've now solved um, the set covering problem optimally. So this is the best, the minimum cost is 80, and that meets all of these constraints.